Hello and welcome to FiveFlow version 3. This release brings a lot of improvements, bug fixes and new features. In case you're not familiar with FiveFlow, it's a differentiable simulation library written in Python that focuses on tight integration with machine learning frameworks such as TensorFlow, PyTorch and JAX. And the way it works is you write high level simulation code, which then gets translated down by FiveFlow to low level tensor operations that can be directly executed within the respective framework. Python allows you to write n-dimensional code as well. So that means you can write a 2D simulation, for example, and run the exact same code in 3D as well. Same goes for floating point precision, like 32 and 64-bit, which can be configured with just one line of code. And you can also parallelize your simulations trivially on the GPU. One area that's very important for simulations but where the base machine learning frameworks don't offer a lot of support is solving sparse linear systems. So FiveFlow has a lot of features in that respect. It has GPU supported solvers for dense and sparse systems. It can also compute preconditioners based on explicit matrices. And the really cool thing is it can transcribe any linear Python function directly to a sparse matrix. So you get all the convenience from matrix free solves but with the speed of matrix solves. Fafl also has a very easy to use plotting API that allows you to create all of these different plots with just one line of code, including the videos. And that's actually a common theme in Fiveflow that you can achieve complex simulations and dynamics with very little code. Texas wave simulation, for example, for which the simulation is only a handful of lines. And the same goes for all of the other examples listed here. So let's get into some of the improvements over FiveFlow 2. Specifying variable boundary conditions has become a lot easier. Like here, where we specify a variable inflow on a regular grid. And then we can use that to specify the boundary, where we use this variable inflow on the left side, that's x minus. On the right side, we use an open condition, and on the top and on the bottom, with a closed condition. And that gives you this nice flow pattern then, using a simple fluid solver. As you can see, we have also added new plotting recipes, like the streamlined plot, but there's now also bar charts and histograms, and the plotting API now supports more flexible arguments, allowing you to customize the plots further. We have simplified FiveLoss API. All the different fields, like centered grid, staggered grid, and point cloud, have now been merged into the field class. And for backward compatibility, the old constructors have now been downgraded to functions which return field instances. Moving on, higher order schemes now support co-located grids as well. And we have implemented one-sided stencils allowing you to specify all common types of boundary condition. Our diffusion operation has also seen improvements. Diffusion with spatially varying conductivity now supports larger time steps and stays numerically stable in the implicit solve. We've also made improvements to our JIT compilation, which supports all composite types, so that's with all the different geometries, as well as fields. And JIT compilation can now be used in conjunction with automatic differentiation in all situations. FiveFlow now supports unstructured meshes as well. So that includes creating meshes from a given spacing and optionally obstacles. But you can also load in existing meshes from SU2 or GMesh files. FiveFlow's field and physics functions now also support unstructured meshes and default to a finite volumes implementation. This allows you to port existing grid simulations over to unstructured meshes very easily. We have further improved our GPU-supported neighborhood search. This now supports JIT compilation with all the backends and can be used for simulations of interacting particles like SPH, for example. To make this compilable with JAX, we have added a buffer management, which automatically retraces a function 
if a buffer overflow is detected. Fiveflow now also has support for height maps and sign distance functions. These can be plotted in 2D and 3D, but of course, as with all things in Fiveflow, you can also run simulations with higher dimensionalities. We've also greatly improved our sparse matrix support and added the graph class, which represents elements with sparse connectivity, like these ropes here. Sparse matrices can now be wrapped directly from SciPy or other native sparse matrices, and Fiveflow can convert between the different formats of sparse matrices. There have also been improvements to our optimizers and convenience network constructors. Here you can see LBFGS finding the densest state of a collection of spheres. Of course, all of these demos are also available directly on Google Colab, where you can run and edit the code to your heart's content. If you'd like to see a deep dive into any of these topics, feel free to leave a comment below. And check out our ICML paper, link in the description. Thank you for watching.